All right, I thought I'd do a quick video here on masking. I hardly ever use masks. If you've uh, watched my videos and uh, I've incorporated into my design several things, little tricks, design tricks, that um, kind of negates uh, the necessity for masking. But there are certain types of uh, imagery that when used a certain way, you know, we just have to use masks. So, just real easy mask. A lot of you are, you know, familiar with the, the use of post-it notes. It has the little sticky backing on there. But here's the thing. I mean, I could just stamp this out and then just cut this out as perfectly as I can. But the thing is, is if you've done a lot of masking before, you know about that haloing effect. So this is just really basic information here. But maybe, you know, if you're kind of new to... Um, uh, scenic stamping and or masking, um, you might not know this, so this is for you. Um, but what I'm doing here is I'm not being very careful when it comes to cutting out this mask because I'm undercutting it, okay? So let me see. So I'll use a little bit of this. Um, uh, that, uh, adhesive part of the post-it note right here, okay? Just so it has something to stick to when I use it. So that's why I didn't cut out that part. But you can see right here um, just how undercut this is, okay? See that right there? Here's that part, there's that part. So it's just kind of a more narrow version of this mask, okay? Now the reason why that is is because if I cut it out perfectly around there, and that was my mask. When I put this piece of paper over an impression of this bridge, okay? When I put this here, if this goes all the way up to the top and the bottom, uh, flush with that impression down there, and I stamp something over the top of it, let's just do this right now. Okay, let's just stamp this out like that. See this tree behind here, how it goes up right to the, um, the bridge? If I have that mask flush with the bridge, even though this post-it note is very thin, okay, I would still be stamping off a little bit of a ridge off the thickness of this. And what you get is that white kind of haloing effect where, you know, the image in back of the, you know, the foreground one just doesn't really come flush to this one. That's why you have to kind of under mask a little bit. So that's how much of that bridge is showing there. Right there. I'd say it's about, it's not an eighth of an inch, but it's a little bit more than a sixteenth of an inch. Um, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's a sixteenth of an inch or so. Um, but yeah, you can see it right here. I'll show you a little bit of closer up um, area of that, okay? So not a huge design but sufficiently under mask, okay? Now, what if you cut this way too narrow? Well, I'd rather have this image right here coming into this one a little bit than to have that, you know, that, that white um, kind of haloing effect, you know, in between the images. You want kind of, it's always better to have merging, you know, a little bit of merging than a little bit of separation because you want all your imagery in scenic stamping to be nice and seamless and uh, you want it to be kind of very difficult for a, a viewer to tell where one image ends and the other one begins. It's like when they look at something like this, is that all one image or is it two or what? You know, how did you do it? And that's all through the masking process and in this case, under masking. Okay.